Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about a major exploit that was just recently patched that affects basically all first party Nintendo online games. So this exploit affects basically all online games that Nintendo has released since the Wii era, potentially even the DS era. And this is potentially one of the biggest exploits of all time ever found for a Nintendo console. So before we really get into how severe and widespread this issue is, I just want to give a little bit of back info on it and just some rundown of what this actual exploit is. Now this exploit was released on GitHub under the name ENL Buffer Pwn, but most of the community just refers to this exploit as RCE, or Remote Code Execution. So I'm not going to read this whole description out loud, but I'll just put a screenshot of it on the video right now, so just so you can read it yourself. But as you can see, it says, This allows an attacker to execute code remotely in the victim's console by just having an online game with them. So if that alone doesn't tell you how powerful that is, then let me just reiterate that in a few different ways. So essentially, if this exploit was released to the public and everyone was allowed to develop their own stuff to be able to use with this exploit, that would have full access to the other person's console just by having an online match with them. So that leaves the other person's system totally within the hacker's control. So that would allow the hacker to do things such as take pictures using the Nintendo 3DS camera without the person being notified. It would also allow the hacker to steal stored credit card info on the eShop or your stored Nintendo network ID or email or other personal info that you have saved on there. It would also allow the hacker to install custom firmware. It would allow the hacker to brick your entire console if they wanted to. It would allow the hacker to modify or delete all of your save files for any games that they wanted to. Now even though this exploit never made it to fruition and a lot of these things were never fully developed, there is a few examples of these things that went around for a little bit. For example, Pablo has a video of him remotely installing CFW onto a 3DS just by playing in a game with himself on a different 3DS. So keep in mind this would allow you to do this not just locally but over the internet too across the world. And in the Mario Kart 7 community, there have also been instances of some Japanese players abusing this remote code execution and using it to reset the VR of other players online. So again, that is literally just scratching the surface of what is possible with this. Keep in mind that this exploit was in pretty much every first party Nintendo game from the Wii era all the way up to the Switch era, today. Now Pablo doesn't mention this on the GitHub page, but Xer, a pretty renowned MK Wii hacker back in the day, apparently found a remote code execution in Mario Kart Wii back in 2016. But at the time, Nintendo had no bounty program and the online was also shut down for Nintendo, so this was not released to them. Now this Mario Kart Wii version, I believe, is released to the public, and from what I heard, it just takes over the other person's console and displays a black screen with a, a simple text message on it. Now there were also modified versions of this code that were privately shared among the community that included a brick other player's Wii code. So yeah, to say this exploit is powerful is an understatement, honestly. So I'll just list off a few of the games that this exploit is in, and keep in mind that there's potentially a lot more games that haven't been listed on here, but some of the developers that kind of know these games might have a hunch of which games it is in. So just some of the publicly listed games include Mario Kart 7 for the 3DS, Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for the Switch, Animal Crossing New Horizons on the Switch, ARMS on the Switch, Splatoon 1 on the Wii U, Splatoon 2 and 3 on the Switch, uh, Super Mario Maker 2 on the Switch, and Nintendo Switch Sports. So these are all pretty major first party Nintendo games that, ha that all have the same major exploit in them across multiple consoles. So I'm just going to quickly go over the technical details of how this is possible and then I'm going to give my opinion for the rest of the video pretty much. So if you really want to know the technical details of this exploit then you're going to have to go to the GitHub link and read the whole thing but I'm just going to kind of read the beginning of it just so you can kind of get a basic understanding of how this is possible. So pretty much this vulnerability exploits a buffer overflow in the C++ class network buffer and that's present in the network library ENL which is also called the net library in Mario Kart 7 and it's used by many any first party Nintendo games. This class contains two methods called add and set, which fill a network buffer with data coming from other players. But the problem is that none of these methods actually check if the input data fits the network buffer. And due to the fact that a hacker can control what kind of data their system is sending to the other system, a buffer overflow can be triggered on a remote console by just having an online session with the hacker. And this vulnerability also scored a 9.8 out of 10 in the CVSS 3.1 calculator, meaning it's critical, almost as high as it gets. 
So if you want to read any more about the technical details about this exploit, then you can head on over to the link I'll have in the video description. But for the rest of this video, we're just going to be giving my opinion and my thoughts on this. So even though it would have been cool to have something like this released in the hands of the public to be able to install custom firmware remotely and stuff and have a whole bunch of cool new hacks and things like that, I think it is overall a very good thing that this was reported to Nintendo. The potential impact that this exploit could have had on Nintendo financially is huge. So when it comes to a programming standpoint, using this exploit to brick someone else's console would be significantly easier than using the exploit to install custom firmware onto someone else's console. In order to brick someone's console, all you have to do is just write a bunch of bad data into their NAND or some other important part of their memory but installing custom firmware is a lot more precise than that. So if this exploit was ever released to the public and someone made a version of it that would install custom firmware, then you can bet that someone would also make a version of this that would be able to brick the other person's console as well. And if you think about how bad this could have been on a financial standpoint from Nintendo, uh, you really just got to do the math to kind of figure that out for yourself. I'm just going to do some sample numbers here, but we're going to be very conservative for these numbers because I'm just going to I'm just going to be as conservative as possible for this. Let's let's say there's only 10 people using this code, and then uh, you're able to get into a lobby with five other people at a time. Even though normally in games like Mario Kart 7 and 8, you can get in lobbies with up to seven other people from. Mario Kart 7 and up to 11 other people for Mario Kart 8, uh, we're just going to be conservative and say you can only get into lobbies with five other people. And then let's say it takes you an average of one minute to brick the other player's console. So just in one hour, that's 60 times that you could complete this. So if you do the math real quick, even just 10 people doing this at a time for one hour with an average time with about one minute uh, playing with five other people, that would be 3,000 consoles in one hour that would be bricked using this. And and if you assume that the average price of a console for a 3DS is going to be about $150, then that would be $450,000 of bricked consoles just in one hour with only 10 people using this code. And that is being very conservative. Because if you think about this, there could be like hundreds of people using this code at a time, getting into rooms with like 10 other people at a time, and then using this code for hours on end. That would be millions and millions of dollars of bricked consoles. So there's a few inexcusable things that Nintendo did, starting all the way back in the DS era, but you know, we're gonna forgive them for now. Let's just go up to the modern era right now. The fact that this was reported in August of 2021 for Mario Kart 7, and April of 2022 for Mario Kart 8, and somewhere in between those times for all the other Switch games. The fact that it took them all the way until December of 2022 to patch Mario Kart 7 is kind of concerning. And Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U still isn't even patched. And as a matter of fact, a lot of the games that still have this exploit have not been patched yet. But Pablo doesn't really want to list them on this GitHub page because if you list the games that have the exploit in them after you release the exploit for different games, people are going to go adapt that exploit for these other games that haven't been patched yet, and then that's going to create the exact issues that I was just talking about before. So in my opinion, Nintendo should have done something a lot sooner about this as soon as they got notified about it. Because if you think about this, the exploit has basically been in Nintendo software since 2005 when Mario Kart DS came out for the most part. So there could have been some sketchy stuff going down behind the scenes the whole time without you even knowing. Someone could have been taking pictures of you out of the 3DS camera this whole time without you knowing. There could be a secret leak of all the Nintendo network ID and passwords and nobody even knows about it yet because this exploit had been in the software for as long as Nintendo Online has been around for the most part. So yeah, I think I did as good of a job as I can to explain how major this exploit is and how it's a good thing that this exploit is actually patched instead of being released to the public. But honestly, I do think Nintendo kind of cheaped out with the payment that they gave to these hackers that reported the exploit. There was a Hacker One profile that recently reported an exploit to Nintendo, and they received a $10,000 bounty because of it. But from what I was told, even though this profile is named Onliner MK7, the two developers of the Mario Kart 7 version of this exploit actually received significantly less than that. And in a completely separate Hacker One thread, you can see Rambo's report to Nintendo about the Mario Kart 8 community RCE, and you can see that they only gave him a $577 reward for this. So honestly, for how much time goes into finding these exploits and reporting them to Nintendo, that is an insult from Nintendo to pay him that little. 
especially when you consider the potential implications of what could have happened if he would have just released this to the public instead of sending it directly to them. You can tell a little bit about his character by the fact that he chose to send this in to Nintendo instead of using it for his own purposes, but let's just consider some dark reality of what could have happened if none of these developers decided to send this in to Nintendo. They could have chosen to use this to steal credit card info from the eShop, and that could have resulted in a huge lawsuit for Nintendo along with millions of dollars lost. They could have also chosen to use this to take pictures of people, and then that could have been a huge legal lawsuit for Nintendo, especially since a lot of kids use the 3DS too, or they could have chosen to use this to brick a bunch of people's consoles or even infect other people's consoles with some kind of virus that will like brick people's consoles that you play with slowly over time. This would have been millions upon millions of dollars for Nintendo, not just in terms of hardware bricks, but also in terms of lawsuits and all of the legal fees that would be associated with something like this. When you've got people that are going around taking pictures of kids using the 3DS camera or bricking other people's consoles or stealing their credit card info. So the fact that they only pay him $577 is kind of ridiculous, but that's just Nintendo, so I would have expected nothing different from them. It's the same company that put this exploit in all of their online games to begin with, and Nintendo has never been the company to own up to their mistakes or admit that they did anything wrong. They're always the type to double down on any decision they make, even if it's completely against the eyes of what everyone else thinks is right. So honestly, I think this deserves a lot more attention than it's getting, and Nintendo is just trying to sweep this under the rug and kind of act like it didn't happen. I think part of the reason why they paid him so little is because they don't want to act like this is a big deal. Because if they would have paid out a hundred grand like this deserves, then that would have drawn a lot more attention to this. It would have gotten a lot more news articles saying, oh, Nintendo paid out a hundred grand bounty. They were just going to pay out their $577 bounty and then act like nothing ever happened, just like they always do. So before I end the video, I just want to address the question of whether or not you should be concerned about this. So the truth is, this exploit is probably in a lot more games than what are listed on the GitHub page, and it's probably unpatched in a lot more games than is even known about. But in reality, the chances of a developer being skilled enough to develop something that would be able to break your console or do anything really dangerous, it's kind of low, but it is definitely still possible, and I definitely think Nintendo needs to go ahead and patch every single game that has this exploit in it. And honestly, you might even want to consider not even playing games online that have unpatched versions of this exploit in it. For the games that have been patched, you can go ahead and play safely online as much as you want, but I would probably avoid playing unpatched games online such as Mario Kart 8 for the Wii U. But yeah, make sure you go ahead and share this video with friends because I think this deserves a lot more attention than it's been getting recently. People really need to know how big this exploit was and how bad it could have been if something like this would have been released into the wild. But yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them in the comments section down below. Leave a like if this video was interesting or if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.